uh, Raymond uh, will be talking to us about Jonathan Mess and the Secret of Art. And so maybe uh, if uh, Raymond is really there, you can really position yourself to take the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, oh, this to... is my beautiful friend. Oh my God, it's yes. you. Yeah. I'm wow. so glad to see you again. Okay, yeah. Greetings <laughs> to Cameroon, you. man. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, first thanks to you. And uh, then, of course, uh, thanks to Kaja for organizing this, for bringing the mythical family together. Thanks to the team and Wars mm -hmm. for making this possible. And uh, that's my personal concern. Uh, thanks in advance to all of you uh, for your patience in advance, because uh, I'm, I think you will need some patience because I'm presenting you uh, the most adult child of art and uh, maybe the most uh, stubborn adult child in art. In the glossary of his volume, uh, Ausgewählte Schriften zur Diktatur der Kunst, Selected Papers on the Dictatorship of Art, Jonathan Mese presents a self-description under the entry Ameise der Kunst and of Art, which reads as follows, quote, since the 10th of February 2008, his speech at the Berliner Lektionen, Berlin Lessons, Jonathan Mese has been the end of art. Total duty, art, end of quote. This humble and submissive self-description does not match the controversial image and descriptions of Jonathan Mese that we get in the media. There we encounter terms like enfant terrible, eccentric, provocative, weird, mad, or even dangerous. For those of you who don't know Jonathan Mese, I made a short compilation of some sequences, interviews, and performances. Uh, have fun if this works. <laughs> Ich bin Jonathan Mese. Ich bin ein Spielkind. Ich bin der Babytrommler der Diktatur der Kunst. Also meine Kunst, deine Kunst gibt es gar nicht wirklich. All das, was hier ist, ist Spielzeug. Also dieses Bild ist Spielzeug, genauso wie dieser Kanister, wie der Pinsel, wie dieser Pinguin-Katalog. Das ist alles Spielzeug. Auch wir Menschen sind Spielzeug der Kunst. Ähm, und wir haben zu spielen mit all dem Material, was da ist. Mit Eiscreme, mit Essen, mit unserer Kleidung, mit unseren Haaren. Wir spielen. Ja, und wenn wir mit Macht spielen, dann geht es. Kunst muss total herrschen, alle Politiker müssen abdanken und äh, die Kunst muss an die Macht. Und deshalb spiele ich und deshalb mache ich das, was ich mache. Keine Rituale, kein Können, kein Talent. Einfach loslegen, machen, weitermachen. Die Kunst wird alle Parteien aus Deutschland, Europa und der Welt hinausfliegen. Die Kunst ist kein Problem. In der Kunst gibt es überhaupt keine Probleme. In der Kunst kann es einen dritten Weltkrieg geben. Das macht nichts. Das ist super. Oder den vierten, fünften. Warum hat es in der Kunst nicht schon den ersten und zweiten Weltkrieg gegeben? Hitler ist in der Kunst kein Problem. Aber der Mensch will immer Realität spüren. Ja, er will immer alles erleben. Ja, und er will auch Vernichtung erleben. Aber ich nicht. Und ich habe eben gespielt und habe immer gedacht, was soll das? Was sind das für Kriterien? Gutes Bild, schlechtes Bild? Das darf man machen, das darf man nicht. In der Kunst darfst du alles machen, solange es nicht Realität ist. Dear friends, I encourage you to take part. The sexiest thing will win. Das Geilste wird gewinnen. Und zwar metabolisch. Das Geilste wird sich selbst wählen. In 2012, Jonathan Mese caused a lot of trouble, not only within the art scene, but within the German society as a whole. When, in the run-up to the Documenta, an exhibition of contemporary art in Kassel, Germany, he showed the Hitler salute and announced his program of a dictatorship of art. As a result, he was officially charged and it was investigated 
whether his performance was an illegal act of using symbols of anti-constitutional organizations. Before the trial began, he gave an interview to the German news magazine Spiegel. In this interview, he was asked why it was good that freedom of art is discussed in the courtroom. His answer, because there will be talked about the dictatorship of art and alternatives to democracy. I am the Socrates of this time. I question everything, myself, the ego, democracy. It is the task of art to question everything, everything. Art is the sensitive field where the problems of reality are brought to the table. If that's no longer allowed, if you're not even allowed to question democracy in its current form, then there's something fishy about our system." End of quote. The fact that he not only calls himself a second Socrates, but also dedicated a performance to the famous philosopher in 2005, prompted me to investigate to what extent the comparison is conclusive and maybe to grasp the phenomenon or rather force of nature called Jonathan Mese. I will illustrate this by means of three points. First point, Socrates and Jonathan Mese as enemies of the constitution. Second point, philosophy and art as play. And third point, Socratic and messianic irony. To the first point, Socrates and Jonathan Mese as enemies of the constitution. Even though in Plato's Politeia, Socrates appears as a critic of democracy, he is said never to have rejected the political system in which he lived in such a radical way like Jonathan Mese rejects his own. For example, he says, it's all about democracy being a human horror. It's the worst horror film ever. Or democracy, do it, just go away. Democracy, go away. We could even ascribe to Socrates, in contrast to Jonathan Mese, a kind of uncritical ob uh, obedience to his own political system, a category of a man of consent bred by democracy. For even when he had the possibility of escaping from prison, Socrates is said to have rejected it because of moral and religious reasons and because he felt obliged to the laws that made it possible for him to philosophize. For Jonathan Mese, on the other hand, religion as well as democracy do not represent a moral authority. He says, art is not religion, but every religion is art. Or religion, like all politics formulated by humans, is greed for meaning, greed for ego, greed for pomposity, yuck, art must rule. End of quote. In the interview, Mese also joins the Socratic team, so to speak, and so far as he claims that art has the task to question everything. And that means also to question issues that challenge the power of moral and political authorities. Using the Socratic indictment as a template, a similar indictment could be written for Jonathan Mese from a liberal democratic point of view which would go beyond the question of the legality of his so-called Mese salute. Jonathan Mese is a wrongdoer because he corrupts the youth and does not believe in the democracy the state believes in, but in the dictatorship of art to which he subordinates everything, including questions and issues of decency and political correctness. However, unlike Socrates, Jonathan Mese was found not guilty since his Hitler salute was classified as an act of artistic freedom or rather as a Mese salute. Point two, philosophy and art as play. As you already saw in the video, a constant motif in Jonathan Mese's self-description and his art is the motif of play or playing, with which he also seems to relativize the artistic aspirations of his own work. Sometimes he uses the terms as synonyms or the terms seem to overlap in their meaning. He says, for example, I don't even know if, if it's art. Well, I'm just playing. This equation or equivalence of art and play is nothing new in the theory of art, and not only in the theory of art, but also in ancient philosophy. For it is Plato himself who, on the one hand, in his dialogue Phaedros, not only has Socrates formulate a critique of writing, but at the same time also has him describe literary works as playful things as such, which don't have to be taken seriously. This of course also includes Plato's philosophical artwork. That means his dialogues would also fall into the category of playful things. 
Likewise, there's also a passage in Plato's Laws that can be seen as an ancient precursor of Jonathan Mises' dictatorship of art, because there also play is emphasized as the central ontological category of humanity. We just have to replace the terms God with art to get Jonathan Mises' constitution of, the, of his dictatorship of art. What is human has been devised as a certain plaything of God, and that this is really the best thing about it. Every man and woman should spend life in this way, playing the noblest possible games and thinking about them in a way that is the opposite of the way they are now thought about. Point three, Socratic messianic irony. As we could already see in the video compilation, Jonathan Mese permanently denies the artistic character of his artworks. He also does not describe himself as an artist, but rather as someone who plays, or more precisely, as a child who plays. He underpins his self-staging as a playing child, not only with corresponding performances, such as in the video, his performance as a baby drummer, but also with statements like the following one, which we actually expect only from small children. In the end, I paint all the pictures just for my mom. My mom is reality, my best reality. Of all realities, she's the most awesome. He also describes himself as the end of art, and that means as a living being who is said to have the character traits of industriousness and selflessness. Another self-description is uh, that he describes himself as the metabolic one. By doing so, he focuses on the biological or evolutionary aspects of himself and his works, and thereby rejects the very opposite of this, the realm of culturally made things, of culture and thus the realm in which art is usually located. Or as Jonathan Mese says, art never is culture. The following self-description can also be found in his writings. I'm the total pro of art. I am not an aesthete. One can react in two ways to these self-descriptions or even self-stagings of Jonathan Mese in a platonic way or in an Aristophanic way. To react in a platonic way means to believe in the honesty of Jonathan Mese's statements about his non-art and to suspect nothing evil behind them. And on the other hand, not to suspect what the opponents or enemies of Socrates and likewise Aristophanes suspected behind his not knowing, irony. And originally, Adonaia, with recourse to Theophrastus's characters, meant a disguised behavior that seeks to achieve an advantage by acting harmless, stupid, or fearful. What was seemingly hidden behind the mask of uh, the irony of Socrates was brought on stage by Aristophanes in his clouds. There, Socrates is portrayed as a stereotypical representative of an intellectual movement, which not only showed its skills in all variations for money, or often just for reasons of entertainment, but also imparted it to others for money. And this intellectual movement were the sophists. Here, it is precisely the popularity, the success, the supposed charlatanry, and especially the economic advantages of the sophists that can be regarded as the criterion to draw a parallel between Jonathan Mese on the one hand and Socrates on the other hand. Jonathan Mese as the pars pro toto of the modern art scene, and Socrates as the pars pro toto of the sophists. Regarding uh, Jonathan Mese, we could say analogously, also the playing child Jonathan Mese is involved in the very adult processes of our modern system, not only in the processes of modern art system, but also in the modern system of econo economy, which is closely linked to the art system. And he does not profit badly from this even, because he gets paid very well for his playing. He gets paid by the same adults of a liberal, democratic, and capitalist society, which he's so often complaining about. He merely hides this fact behind an innocent mask of irony. That is what a conservative opponent of Jonathan Mese and his art would say. And when Jonathan Mese, Jonathan Mese says about his art or about art in general, it's like a tea bag. People make a basic shape, 
they give a tea bag to me and I just pour hot water on it. That's all an artist does, end of quote. If uh, Jonathan Mises says this, a lot of cons conservative critics of modern art would agree on that honest point, but they cannot blame the artist who doesn't even claim to be an artist. What Jonathan Mises is performing here is Socratic irony within modern art. And with both Socrates and Jonathan Mises, we don't really know where to lo locate them. They seem to have no place or in Greek, they are atopoi, placeless. And despite this maybe flattering comparison with Socrates, the end of art, Jonathan Mese would probably be very annoyed by my presentation because away you go antiquity. This is very important. May antiquity disappear forever as a cultural program. Thank you very much for your attention.